Um, again, so we're kind of like learning along the way. Uh, feel free to throw in your questions. Uh, we want this to be an informal session as well. Um, so we're happy to like, you know, just, uh, pause and see your questions and answer anything you have. Um, we're going to make a few assumptions as well, such as, uh, you know, you may be tuning in without a setup, but you may be also tuning in and having to test some of these equipment that we have right here. Um, so, so we're going to try to accommodate a range of, uh, you know, people uh, and, you know, participants with different intentions for this workshop. Um, but otherwise, we are at the bookmaker space. Uh, you want to talk about this? Hi. Um, so, right now, we're just, uh, four of us right now. So, the people you can't see today are us <laughs> and David. And uh, together, we have kind of put together this uh, talk for today. Um, so, uh, we have been exploring different ideas, so fluorescence is just one of them, and then here we have been looking at bioplastics, and behind us we have we see like, there's a lot of kombucha and uh, different um, things that we have just tried to work with, uh, sourdough, uh, etc. And we are constantly trying to explore if there's any other different kinds of materials or ideas, concepts, things that we can try and experiment with just to have fun and try to create something completely different. So so edible maker space uh, primarily looks at food and hacking uh, and, and everything else through the lens of food as well. So uh, lately we've been in this uh, fermentation craze uh, as with many other people during a period of uh, lockdown. Um, but we've, we wanted to share a bit more about um, some uh, glow in the dark dyes that you could possibly try um, at home or in your home kitchen as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, so maybe we'll just start first. Uh, so, the first question is what is fluorescence? To answer the question, you need a uh, UV light like what I have here. You can purchase one of these uh, online um, just so that you have a source of UV radiation, but you can also have uh, some kind of like a nail light. So recently it's really popular to have like gel nails. Those um, are kind of like acrylic that will cure when you expose uh, UV light on it. So there are these uh, nail lamps that are just uh, there for making these kind of um, nail applications. So that's that. Um, otherwise, some people have tried to take a very bright source of light that you know, emits all kinds of um, wavelengths of light and then applying a filter on top of that so that you filter out just the UV light, but your results may vary depending on the kind of light you have. The applications of uh, fluorescence uh, can be found most easily with your money. So here I have a $10 note. Let me show you. So it's a ten dollar note. But if you shine a light on it, you can see that here it says ten in the middle. The rectangle here. So these kind of features are used in currencies so that uh, it's a very easy source of verification uh, to see whether this is a genuine note or not. Other ways of uh, putting uh, these kind of UV dyes in. Like they put it in some fibers so that they spin it into the into the paper or the plastics that the currency is made of. And sometimes they will hide really intricate patterns into the currency. Um, so if you explore like Indonesia rupiah, it's really pretty. So that's just one of a very common um, usage of UV lights and fluorescents. So today uh, because we're at the bowl maker space, we're going to show you some sources of fluorescence that are edible. Here, and, and, and we're going to put them into jellies to show you. The reason is, the reason why I want to use jellies is because when you have a jelly, there's um, a certain amount of thickness so that there's enough light, there's enough material to produce that fluorescence so that you get enough light. If you take all these uh, dyes that we have and you put it on paper, you might not have that enough, enough depth so that you get enough color. So here I'm going to show you the fluorescence in 
Colic water. Colic water contains quinine. We got switch up some lights. So quinine is the material that is the ingredient that will fluoresce. You can see this is blue. And we have some ready-made um, samples of the jelly. So this is a uh, over here, this is a uh, spinach jelly. So where the light shines, you might see that it's really red Maybe from the top here. You can see that the jelly is really red and pink. And then on this side, this is honey. Honey, it's, the fluorescence is not that bright. Also because the honey has been diluted to make this jelly. So it's even less bright. Other things that you can use to produce this fluorescent colors are well, different kinds of oils, any kinds of cooking oils, I mean, whatever you have, sunflower oil, olive oil. If you have extra virgin olive oil, put it in a glass bottle and it just looks really, really pretty. Also, here I have It's quite yellow, but the yellow is not that. We might be able to see it. Yes, uh, for the question in the comments, yes, it's a spinach jelly. So first, let's try and make the quinine jelly and then I'll briefly explain to you uh, how to make the other two jellies that I've shown you because they are uh, a little bit more uh, complicated to make. So for the quinine jelly, it's quite simple. You take tonic water then you'll need to measure out some uh, of your gelling agent. So for today, we're going to use agar agar. Okay, no, no brand, <laughs> no, brand, no brand endorsement, but this is agar agar. You can also use gelatin powder or konyaku powder. Uh, so agar agar comes from seaweed. Konyaku also comes from seaweed. Gelatin usually comes from animal products, so uh, it's made by boiling uh, bones and skin and cartilage and all those kind of things, and then extracting from that. Uh, so I guess it will be like a more vegetarian form uh, of doing this. There are also other kinds of uh, materials like um, ivy might be less common. So IU is made from figs. Um, of course, whatever kind of jelly agent you have available, you can use because um, for quinine, it's like water and quinine, right? In tonic water, so anything should, um, any kind of jelly agent should work. Uh, the only concern is that because of the quinine in the water, it tends to uh, affect the jelly process, so you might need to put a little bit more. So based on this instructions here, for normal, if you're making a normal jelly, it's uh, roughly one liter of water to around 10 grams and you can put in another 20, 250 grams of sugar. So one liter of water plus 250 grams of water and you need to add 10 grams of agar powder. So I might need to add a bit more. Yeah, it's really hot. 
Then you just need to just need the heater and just need the heater until it boils. In this case, uh, when you're dealing when you're dealing with uh, jellies, you can afford to um, uh, use a whisk because it boils really fast. So a good example would be like, just take a whisk and whisk it really fast. Especially with gelatin because it might like, tend to stick to the side. Especially when you want to make really good looking jellies uh, that do not bubble. Uh, having a whisk is a good investment here. No, but with, with this uh, other prop. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> But with this, the other problem is that there's a lot of um, uh, carbonation in tonic water, so you might want to stir that up as well. I'm trying to pop some of this. Can put it in the mold. Yeah. So this is a silicone mold. But of course you can also put it in a bowl or whatever you have. Um, so in this case, if you are thinking of uh, uh, delicious jellies that glow in the dark, you can consider putting in um, other items such as uh, um, honey, sugar, uh, any colorless fruit juices, uh, all to add flavor in the jelly as well. Um, so the idea is to, you know, to, to make things delicious and tasty um, uh, so that people can enjoy it uh, as well. But uh, today we're just doing a really basic recipe where you can see a jelly that glows uh, in the dark um, but we didn't really add um, any sweetener in this batch um, so it's probably going to taste like jellified tonic water right yeah which is quite bitter <laughs> <laughs> tonic jelly is indeed strange yeah so so yeah oh, the light shines the little yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna bring the, the, the camera closer. Like milky blue color. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so in terms of like technical issues with regards to jelly, is uh, um, if you really like jellies that look good, um, and uh, let me just see everyone. Um, if you like jellies that look good, um, as well as uh, don't have any bubbles, uh, a tip would be to just like kind of. Use a flame or blow torch, uh, torch over all your jellies so that the bubbles will dissipate. Um, if if you're preparing for like a party or a get together, every everyone likes a good jelly as well. So I don't know if it's going to be a bit more obvious, but this is water, and this is what water looks like. It's like nothing, but if you shine it on the jelly, so shine on water, and you shine on jelly, it's quite different. Okay, so this is the basic recipe for any kind of like water soluble uh, kind of dyes. So the next dye will be uh, honey. Honey like oils will glow yellow, but the difference is that of course you can mix a lot of water with honey. Show 
a yellowish color. But not really pointing into the. Can you see this? So it's yellow. You can of course try that yourself at home. So uh, the challenges of making a honey jelly would be how much honey you want to put because the fluorescence is definitely not as bright as what you can see and the tonic water jelly, which means that you have to, because uh, if you just put in honey straight up, it's going to be very, very, very viscous. So with the jelly I showed you just now, for that one, I used 50% uh, jelly and 50% 50, uh, 50 water and 50% uh, honey. This and this you can totally eat, but it's not going to be as not as bright as pure honey is because it's already diluted. Quite a bit more edible than honey <laughs> water. Oh, but a, a fun trick will be to add alcohol uh, into your jelly. So like a gin and tonic jelly, mm -hmm. I, I guess that would be pretty good as yeah. a, like a, a dish because for honey. Um, gin is you know, alcohol, so it's going to mix into the water. Um, so anything that mixes into the water, you can use any kind of jelly, uh, gelling agent, agar agar, kanyaku, gelatin, anything you want. Now the question is, what if what you want to put in is not mixable in water? Like you want to put in the oil. You know. So for any kind of oil based substance, you have to use you have to use gelatin. What we show you just now is a um, spinach jelly. Um, so for spinach, the compound that is fluorescing is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll fluoresces red. What we've done here is that to extract the chlorophyll, we've used oil to, in fact, um, the oil we showed you just now, the canola oil, to extract the chlorophyll. You can also extract the chlorophyll by using a very high percentage alcohol like 90 to 100 percent. If you use vodka, it will probably not work uh, because we've tried it and it didn't work. Uh, it will not look uh, as bright red. So what you do is you take, or at least that's not what we did with this uh, spinach jelly, is that we used uh, spinach. Of course, you can use any kind of vegetable or leaves that uh, that are that contain a lot of chlorophyll. So uh, an alternative would be, um, we're actually thinking of using pandan. So pandan is uh, this kind of uh, flavoring agent um, that is local to our Southeast Asia region. So here we have some pandan leaves. Yeah. Okay. So these are some pandan leaves. They have this angle to them, like, and then they're around this way. Depending on where you're at, you might be able to find an entire plant and then you just uh, take the um, freshest, uh, the newest leaves that are very, very, um, they're the most fragrant. If you get the older leaves, you might not get as much aroma out of them. So you can use that as well. Uh, a lot of people have described pandan as being like light vanilla, but it's actually a very, I, I find that it's quite distinct and it's used in a lot of desserts. 
that you can find in Southeast Asia, including like Chandong, a lot of different koi, uh, different kind of things. So you can do that as well, and then and then uh, add sugar uh, later on. But for all these kinds of vegetables, you have to use either a very high percentage of alcohol, or you have to use um, oil. And if you find a high percentage like alcohol to extract it, most likely you're going to find methanol in it, so it's far not safe. Uh, that's why we've decided to use oil uh, to extract the chlorophyll. What you do is first you blanch the vegetables so that all the cell walls are uh, destroyed. And then when the whole vegetable is really floppy, you blanch it until it's quite floppy, you blend it, you put it, put everything in the blender and then you mix it together with oil. So at first it just chop everything up and uh, it's not the oil is not so visible, but you have you might have to run the blender for a while. So that everything up after all the vegetables are just um, shredded up, you just uh, let it run a bit more. The surest way of making sure that you have extracted the color, uh, the colorful into oil is of course you use a UV lamp and you just shine onto it and see whether you get a bright red color. This red color is so bright, um, as you can see just now, it's really, really bright red. It's so bright that we're thinking that you. You could, you know, probably shoot a horror film and then just like douse the character in in the chlorophyll oil so that it looks like blood everywhere. But it's not blood. And then maybe you switch online, it's just chlorophyll on the chlorophyll oil rather. Okay. So after you get the chlorophyll oil, okay, then you have to uh, emulsify it into gelatin water because it's oil right that's why gelatin is the best gelling agent instead of agaga or kanaku which tend to work better only with um, you know aqueous solutions so with gelatin what you do is you um, with gelatin oil the proportion is roughly 100, 100 ml or yeah, around 100 ml of oil to roughly 50 grams of water. So 100 ml oil, 50 ml water to uh, five grams to five grams of gelatin. So you can either use the sheet gelatin or you can use the powdered gelatin. With sheet gelatin, you probably need to put it in the water first to bloom and then uh, heat it up so that the whole thing uh, melts. Or you can use uh, the powder gelatin where you just put it into the water directly and heat everything up. So the first step is you take the water and the, maybe you can try doing that. So you take the water and the gelatin and put it together and heat it up until everything melts together. After everything melts together, then uh, you take it out of the heat and put it in a metal container. And then you put the oils in slowly. Just put it in like a little dash of it and then you just put in a little bit more after a while. Uh, and, then, and then you can slowly add in a bit more. But there's probably a limit to how much oil you want but so sometimes you might find that around 100, 100 uh, amounts of oil is not going to completely emulsify into the solution. If you find that, right, it's actually okay. Just start adding more oil into it. But when you make the jelly, you might find that at the end of it, you, you'll still see a layer of oil on top. And that's just what happens because it cannot completely emulsify. Yeah. Because it com cannot completely emulsify into the whole solution. Uh, and then on top of that, you might want to put in different kinds of uh, flavoring agents. So you can put in some sugar or you can put in some, because it's spinach, we decided to make it savory. We put in some chicken stock powder. Uh, 
as long as you don't put too much, it shouldn't affect the gelling process. So after that, then you just put it overnight to chill. Or usually we just put it overnight. It usually takes less time than that, but uh, that should be sufficient. Okay, so you can see over here the tonic water jelly that we've made just now has already solidified. It's not flowing out. Let's push them off. Yeah. Uh, we forgot to do the recipe, we'll paste it, we'll put it online. I think somebody put the correct one. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Uh, the recipe is correct. Just okay, I'm it. just gonna take one out. So it looks like that. And yes, it glows. <laughs> and you can eat it. Perfect specimen. <laughs> and you can oh, eat let me it. switch off the lights in. <laughs> I just ate it. Whoa. It's just tonic water, it's not bad. It's not as bitter. <laughs> I mean, uh, given extra time, we would probably like, have liked to be a bit more you ambitious. Yeah. We can we can have one together and do a cheers afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can eat. Um, so at you least these are all the kinds of um, colors that we've managed to uh, figure out. You can of course try and see if you can stack different colors together. Let's try and see if it works. So we have one blue and one yellow here. The yellow is coming out a bit more than the blue, right? Blue is a bit not that illuminated. Oh, nice. You can shoot sideways as well. <laughs> sideways is just going to be like that. Yeah, it just looks blue and white. But this is quite nice. So if you want to stack them so that you can get a mixture of colors, right? The UV light decays quite fast through the jelly. So you might want to make it like quite thin. Because or or you can or you can just mix the different mix the different things together. So you can mix tonic water and honey together so you can mix the yellow and yellow you can mix the yellow and blue colors together. With the red, it's going to be a bit more difficult because it's an emulsion. So it looks a bit more... Um, looks a bit more solid. What's the, what's the opposite of the trend? It looks more opaque. <laughs> it, looks, it looks more opaque. Can we have a spoon? Uh, then I can like scoop the jelly out. It looks more opaque. I think there's a little bit of oil there, so so it's gonna be harder to shine a light through it. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Instead, it's better if you just have it in one layer. Of course, the alternative is like you find a you find a ethanol that's pure enough and doesn't have any methanol in it, and then um, and then you extract the the chlorophyll out and then you mix it together with whatever other, other colors you want until you get the fluorescent color you want. Uh, just take note, the red is just really, really, really intense in chlorophyll, so you might want to dilute it even more than what we have here. But of course, if you if you have a really pure ethanol, that's fine. If there's methanol in it, then maybe um, you might want to process it until the methanol is gone. Can distill, you can probably distill it so that you can uh, extract the methanol. Or you can just use it to extract it and not eat it at the end.
what we don't have here is a green. Uh, This is like some microgreens, but usually you don't see the fluorescence from plants, like just from plants directly. You really have to extract it out before you see it. By the way, this is a, you may get this sawdust, sawdust right? Sawdust bioplastic. So another idea is, because this bioplastic is um, held together using agar. agar, right? So you can also think of, you know, putting like some kind of fluorescent dyes into this so that so that it not only has uh, the sawdust or whatever solids that are holding it together, but if you shine a light on it, you can have another color coming out. Yeah. So shall we go into Q and A's? Does anybody have any questions? Uh, we will post the recipe up later so that uh, you can come back and take reference to it. Want to make your own jellies and have uh, different kind of things with that. Otherwise, we'll probably start eating the jellies. <laughs> you want to taste this? Okay, you can stack them together. I don't know, I'll just do that. <laughs> Next question. Where would you say? It's not very tasty. You <laughs> <laughs> did last time. Um, we, this is the tastiest. We will put the recipes um on our wiki page um, and we will also post the link on the chat to our web page. And after this workshop, we would post this um the workshop, the recipes, the brief. Um, on our Edible Maker Space uh, web page as well. So, you know, it's open access to everyone else and everyone can make jellies at home and share recipes with each other as well. Yeah. Thanks so much for your question so far. Um, yeah. We're happy to take suggestions or more questions. Otherwise, um, we managed to cook the jellies quite fast and that's why we, we finished the workshop earlier than expected. <laughs> um, do we have anything strong enough that um, we could paint with? You can paint with. Uh, okay, so for, for paint, right? The, ideally, you need something that has a bit of thickness. So any kind of watercolor is probably not going to cut it because it's the, the, the layer of dye is too thick. So one idea would be to try and use uh, oil paint with it. For tonic water, you might not want to just use tonic water. You might want to find like quinine sulfate or any kind of like solid form of quinine and then uh, mix it together with whatever um, kind of oil paint. Oils are used for oil paint. Yeah. And then you can try and use that after you mix it together. For chlorophyll, You might have to find some way to get the chlorophyll out as a solid after you extract it out with oil or ethanol and then you take that out and then mix it with the oil paint again. And then for honey, I guess for like normal oils, you just take flaxseed oil and just like apply it directly. So that's how we, how we suggest to use the three colors. Yeah, so I mean, in terms of food, I think uh, we found a, a very nice medium that uh, is in three-dimensional in form that's jelly. Um, but feel free to explore otherwise, I think oil paints or even gels. Um, gels or binders, like a cornstarch, for instance, would make a very, very interesting uh, gel where you can uh, paint glassware uh, with it. So, so just one thing to take note, if you use uh, cornstarch, Cornstarch will reflect UV light very, very strongly. So, so when you shine a light on it, it just looks very, very bright, um, white or whatever the UV light color appears to you. Uh, and then with oils, uh, you might have to take note that oils themselves, uh, as I've shown you just now, they have a, a, red, a yellow fluorescence to them. So even the spinach jelly I showed you just now, that's a tinge of yellow from the oil that I used. It's, not going to be as red 
as it would be if I use ethanol to extract it. But still, it's a very, very white color from the film. So, um, and then there's another consideration, which is that your different dyes um, have different level of fluorescence. They will produce different amounts of light when you shine a light onto it. So you have to figure out how to balance it. So far, the red is very intense, the blue is very intense, uh, the yellows are not so intense. So I have to find a way to, to stack up, to stack it up so that you have more yellow light coming through to balance with the other colors. Or you can just tone down the rest of the dye so that whatever you want to paint, it looks very balanced. Yeah. Cornstarch does pop. I thought only titanium white colors. Titanium dioxide? Like titanium dioxide, CO? I'm not so sure about that, but I would imagine that it's going to be very, very easy, yes? Yes, yeah. I don't know, we can try. Do we have the new time also? Okay, I don't have time in the to shoot Tom. Let me try. We don't have titanium dioxide, but we're in Singapore, so we have sunscreen. We can try it on the hand is already. Oh nice, yeah, that's a super nice idea. Let's let's try it with sunscreen. <laughs> Wait, let me switch off your one. Okay. Okay, anything? Not really, yeah. At least not this. Okay, disclaimer is that this is not titanium dioxide, like this is a chemical sunscreen, so actually from what I see here it's like not really, right? It doesn't look like not really, you can't really see much of fluorescence from it. Yeah, I can't really see. Like if I shine it on directly, it just looks like the same color as my hand, so... Um, maybe you can try pure titanium dioxide powder. Uh, that might have a different um, effect. But at least for this one, there are way too many things for me to, to get a very strong flower sense out of it. Any more questions? Look at white pills. Wait, oh, well, we haven't tried that yet, but we would I probably. It would be interesting to crush them and like use them as paints, I guess. But. Sometimes, like especially for a white colored thing, sometimes it's not fluorescence, it's just reflection. It's on the material. I guess one sure, like one sure, really sure way to know that it's fluorescing is if that color is different when you look at it under normal light and under UV light. <laughs> then you can be very sure that the different, the color difference is due to Okay. Yes, there are no more questions. So yeah, please uh, take a look at our website and our wiki if you have the time. If you uh, need more clarification, and of course you can uh, find our emails uh, and contact us on our website uh, if you have any more different questions. And hope you. Enjoyed this workshop and hope you have a nice day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll be here on chat um, to answer some of your questions <laughs> because we can't <laughs> quite talk and toggle at the same time. Um, but otherwise, uh, let, let us post the wiki um, link to our, our workshop uh, where we will be updating um, the, the wiki with all the details that. Uh, you've asked for after this, but we we really appreciate um, you know you guys joining in. Uh, so thank you so much. It's been really nice and encouraging as well.